We're heading into the President's Cup and we're chatting with Steve Elling to get a preview, a little sneak peek. Glad to see you. I'm Lauren Shahadi. Steve Elling, glad to see you too. Welcome on into the discussion. First things first, I'm going to get a preview of all the events starting with Thursday. What do you have? Yeah, the um, kind of the cool thing about the President's Cup is, you know, a lot of people sort of look at it, at it as the light beer equivalent of the Ryder Cup, but it's got a couple of things that they do that, uh, in my view, make it a little bit better and more interesting. And one of the things is they play over four days, um, and it's, it's pretty much everybody plays every single day, and it's much harder to hide a player. So yeah, they here they start on Thursday. They'll go with uh, every single guy on all, you know, all twelve guys on both sides will play foursomes starting um, at noon here San Francisco time and Friday they um, they go into four balls and then Saturday they play a little bit of both roll right on into Sunday when they do the singles thing and it's all 12 guys flying solo going head to head uh, with their opposite numbers so you get an extra day at the President's Cup which is which is kind of cool the Ryder Cup it's all kind of crowbarred into three days of uh, of angst and bloodletting and and venom and vitriol from the fans and uh this one's a little more fun and uh, a little less uh, suffocating on an emotional scale. This time you get one more day to enjoy the angst. How fun. <laughs> hey, Steve. Uh, it's the U.S. against the international team. The U.S. team heavily favored, but both teams are stacked, Steve. Yeah, the uh, this is the ninth meeting here. I think the U.S. has won all but, um, well, they tied one and they lost one. So it's been pretty lopsided. Yeah, I was just looking at Ladbrokes online. Um, the U.S. is a is a one to three favorite, which would mean you got to bet three bucks to win one buck. So uh, somebody out there obviously thinks that this is going to be more of the same recipe. So you know, I think it might be a little closer than that, frankly, um, and, and it might need to be um, similar to the Ryder Cup refrain of last year. You know, the Europeans had been laying a pretty steady diet of whippings on the U.S. and it had become uh, you become kind of lopsided, and I think that for the American fans, there's been a little bit of a disconnect there with the Ryder Cup. So, I think to keep this thing as a, a you know, a viable entity uh, and continuing to pick up momentum, you know, it's gotten bigger each year. It's gotten more fun each year. I think there's been more uh, broad interest uh, beyond just the golf fans every year. Uh, I think the international team needs to show up and and make this thing competitive. And the quickest way of doing that is to just not get blown out on the first day as they have in the past. Well, of course, you can't talk about the U.S. team without talking about Tiger at the top of his game after a win. Should be well-rested. He's good to go, right? Yeah, Tiger's good to go. There's a little bit of an issue with uh, Phil Mickelson, who uh, just won a couple weeks ago in Atlanta, did something, tweaked his back. Don't have a lot of details yet. I haven't actually seen him myself. I had a chance to talk to him about it. Um, Fred Couples, the American captain, was, uh, was telling us that they've got, um, you know, kind of a massage guy, uh, chiropractor, expert type on the ground, just been working on Phil a little bit, and Fred said he saw Phil hitting balls on the range this morning, uh, and he looks fine, and, you know, I, I expect Phil to play in every match, or he'll at least try to play in every match, so, uh, you know, I, we're kind of all sort of waiting around with Phil to see whether, you know, this um, resurgence in his putting in his short game was a one-off thing in Atlanta or something that he's going to be able to kind of take with him over the break and the winter and into next season, and maybe... You know, maybe throw a scare into Tiger uh, a little more consistently, give that guy a run for his money for a world number one. You know, Steve, you mentioned the international team can't get blown out the first day. You have VJ, Vijegas, Ogilvy. These guys are dangerous. Yeah, you know, it's um, it's an eclectic bunch. It's kind of a, you know, one of the theories why the, the European, the European, there I go, force of habit, the international team hasn't done as well as, say, the European team when the international team on paper is – a stronger 12-man group than, in many cases, the European team has been at the Ryder Cup in terms of, of the world rankings and such, is um, there's no real common flag for them. You know, Europe uh, is a little bit more of a singular entity from that standpoint. You know, the, the Continentals and, and all those guys, um, you know, they're, they're united in most cases by a common currency and a lot of commonality and things like that. And, uh, you know, gosh, on this this President's Cup team, you've got a South Korean, a Japanese guy, a Colombian, a Canadian, um, you know, South Africans, Australians. Um, I don't know that these guys get a lot of crap if they lose their matches when they go back home, whereas, you know, if you're on a European team and you lose a Ryder Cup, you get ripped for two years. I mean, you, you hear about it over and over and over and over, so it, it's a little odd. I mean, it's, it's 
basically the whole planet against, uh, you know, out, other than Europe against the U.S. And uh, I don't, I don't know that that works in their favor in terms of uh, kind of uh, uh, of cobbling together any sense of, of urgency to win this thing. All right, we'll see how it all works out. And Steve Elling, of course, keep us posted. You can check out all the recaps right here on CBSSports.com. For Steve Elling, I'm Lauren Shahadi. We'll see you next time.